Hi guys, it's another Friday and I was again looking at your comments, reading what you guys are saying and you asked a lot of questions about stop. So today we're going to talk about stop. But I think it's really important that we talk a little bit about where the word stop comes from and what it does in MA2. And I don't want to go into teaching MA2 at the moment, but I think understanding MA3 and if you are an MA2 user and you're moving to MA3, it's important to look at what did stop do in MA2 and understand that that's not what it's doing here. We just went ahead and used the same word because it does a similar thing, but the principle, like technically how it does it is different. If you are an MA3 user and you never used MA2, you don't really have to understand how it worked in two to understand how it worked in three. But I think for those of you who are converting, it's really important information to be able to see the differences and how it's working for you now. So that's what we're gonna look at. Okay, so to understand what's happening here, I wanna look at the fixture sheet and the tracking sheet primarily. In the tracking sheet here, if I look at fixture one, let's go to Q1. Oh my goodness, can't type today. Oh, okay, so Q1, fan out, they're static. I hit go on Q2, it tracked in, that's great. I'm gonna hit go on Q3. This is where my phaser is starting, but this phaser is an absolute one. So there's nothing happening on the relative layer. This is only running absolutely over these pan tilt values. And again, I'm do showing this with pan tilt because I think it's the most common and easiest to digest, but this is gonna apply the exact same way to every single attribute. I'm always gonna say that because it's true. Okay. And then when I go into my next queue here, so I'm in Q4, this is tracked, so I could run the stop command in either Q3 or Q4, we would see how it works, but I think the reality of it is when we're using stop, we're working with some sort of linear progression here. And I, like a common thing we got a lot at the beginning of MA3 before it did any of this was, okay, what I wanna do is I wanna be able to grab my fixtures and I want the console to be smart enough to go up through this tracking sheet and take a look at where what, what were the values before, right? So in MA2, that's not what it was doing. We would actually apply the effect layer. It was a whole other like set of values that lived on top of the value layer. So my value layer was here, my effect was here, and for me to see my value layer again, I had to essentially flatline or remove the effect layer so the value layer could shine through. But it was always there. That's not how MA3 works. In MA3, we have one layer, which I do believe is less confusing but if you're converted, it can be more confusing. So follow me here, right? So now we have one layer and we don't have an effect that lives on top of it. We have an effect that replaces it. So the value layer has gone away and the effect layer is here. And now I need the value layer to come back and the effect layer to go away. That's what Stomp is doing. It's saying, okay, you don't want this effect layer anymore, but you probably want the value you had before. Like we're gonna go back to it, right? That's how lighting programming works. We're not going to something different just thing what the console would say if it was a person. So I've grabbed my fixtures here and I can hit the stomp button, right? It's gonna be kind of in that middle section between uh, your two uh, screen six and seven. It's gonna be here and I'm gonna say stomp, please. I'm gonna type it in the command line for the rest of this video though. So when I said stomp, please, what did it do? We can see from the fixture sheet that it activated the absolute layer and it activated the fan out preset specifically. It said, okay, programmer, we're in Q4, you were using the wave, you told me to stop running an effect, so I'm gonna go back up my sequence sheet here and I'm gonna find the last static value you used for whatever attribute we're working with. So we're working with Pantel. So it went back up there. You'll notice it did nothing on the relative layer. This is because nothing was running on the relative layer. So, layer. so it is smart enough to know we are only applying this to the absolute layer right now. And so it said, hey, I'm gonna run back up there, I'm gonna grab this, and this is the value I'm gonna put in the programmer. Now, let's say we are in the uh, pro uh, programmer, we're like, we're not running a queue, so let's off sequence two here. I'm gonna grab my group, put them out full, make them yellow, because why not? And let's set them to this wave phaser. So this is exactly what was running in that queue a second ago, but it doesn't have a queue list to reference. So now when I go stop, please, remember I'm gonna type it, hit enter, what does it do instead? It didn't go back to that fan out preset because it doesn't, like there's nothing for it to reference. And when there's nothing for stop to reference, it just sends lights to their default values. And again, it did nothing to the relative layer because the relative layer itself wasn't activated. So it doesn't, doesn't think it has to do anything. 
we're gonna look at the relative layer next. Because I think it's really important, especially with phasers, to understand what's happening with the relative layer because we program a lot of position phasers with that layer. Okay, so in a queue, it goes back up, looks at that fan out preset, says, hey, I'm gonna activate that. In the programmer, it says, I have nothing to look at, I'll just send lights to default. Maybe that's what the maybe that's what the programmer wants, right? Let's go to Q6 here. So in Q6, I've done something a little different. You'll see that on my absolute layer here, I'm just in this straight front preset. So this is just a static preset. They're just shooting straight down front of the stage. But on the relative layer, they're looking at a relative circle phaser. So my circle is only running on that relative layer. And the same principle, it does apply. If I had a relative preset to go back to, it would activate it because I don't. And I say stomp, please. Still don't have to type out, please. I hit stomp. What does it do instead? it's going to send those relative values to zero. So now we're not looking at anything relative, we're just looking at what's in the absolute layer. I could go ahead and store this as a Q7, right? But now I've put hard values in my Q and I don't really like doing that. I would much rather have a preset in my Q to reference. So a lot of times when I'm programming, I'm gonna go in here and make uh, just like a stomp <laughs> preset, right? Because it's just going to be the values that Stomp would put in. So let's grab my wash here. I'm going to just off Q2. I'm going to go to my relative layer here and I'm just going to set it to zero. So that, this is just activated zero for pan tilt for the relative. I'm going to store this as a preset here. It's universal. So this is going to be my position Stomp, position Stomp, call it whatever you want, right? But I'm going to call it Stomp because that's what the console would do if I stop it, right? That's what we just learned. It puts it to zero, so okay, this is my stop preset, guys. Okay, let's go back to Q6. So go to Q6, great. And I'm gonna grab my spots gridded group. And now if I had this stop preset stored in a queue above it, so let's store this into Q1 and we'll just let that stop, position stop track all the way through. You'll notice this did not change my absolute layer. Like all the programming there has stayed intact. All we've done right now to our queuing is added this position stomp in every queue that's above the first relative phaser that we ran. Now I can grab my spots gridded group. And instead of having to go find that preset because I know when I created this sequence, I had it in there, it's tracking through. I can now say stomp please. And instead of us having to go find that stomp preset or put hard values in our queue. Now stomp preset has been activated in the programmer and I can store Q7, merge over my hard values. And there you go. I hope this helps. I hope this helps make stomp make more sense. And yeah, thank you for your comments. As always, let's talk soon. Bye.